Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this uh, pretty busy Sunday night, April 23rd, 2023. A whole bunch of 23s are in that uh, numerical model there. Uh, it is about 9.14 p.m. here along the West Coast in the state of California. I don't see any auroras outside yet, but we're getting into that. Uh, we'll check that out here in just a second. The latest earthquake, though, shows a 1.5 into the area of Alaska. Also some movement over here around Puerto Rico looks like with a 3.4 there in the red flag. So let's see what's going on here. Uh, the Aurora forecast is lighting up pretty much like a firecracker. Uh, we have seen reports of the Aurora's down into some mid latitudes here. We're talking about around Kansas, uh, Colorado, and uh, areas around Idaho as well. So look at this Aurora forecast here. This is from the Space Weather Prediction Center. This isn't just a, a model put out by somebody on the internet. This is the, uh, the official reports coming in here covering a good bit of Oregon. So if you are out there and you have clear skies, I'm, I'm going outside here in a little bit. We got a lot of high clouds here in Northern California that is limiting our view to the north. Uh, but if you do have clear skies here, Northern California, northward into Oregon and Washington, you may want to go outside and check out the potential auroras that are forecasted right now from the Space Weather Prediction Center. Also, uh, reports being uh, uh, sent here from Wisconsin areas. i seen even a report around North Carolina. Now, I'm not for sure how true that is. This is the official report. Not saying it did or didn't happen, but... Uh, get out there now is the time to get out there to see if uh, uh you can see the auroras that are taking place here from a pretty strong uh g3 storm we are currently in a g3 storm category and um notice that uh really ramping up here as the uh, uh night progresses it's very dark obviously here across the north american continent so get out there if you can this is a little bit lower then the G4 storm that we seen earlier today, we had the KP index reach around the eight category. That's uh, uh, almost unheard of. It's been a while since we've seen this type of elevated activity. And this is all due to a coronal mass ejection that was produced from a CME, right? Remember, the, you remember that CME that was produced here a couple days ago? Well, uh, that uh, arrived here earlier today. And a little bit earlier than expected, had this reached these levels when it was dark out here uh, along the North American continent here, I believe we would have seen this down here into Northern California and much uh, lower latitudes out here across the North American continent. But uh, either way, it's still promising. So get out there if you can uh, to observe this potential aurora for, um there in the night sky current current aurora forecast as issued here by the space weather prediction center looks like we're currently at a seven level which is the uh, g3 storm uh, still pretty strong kicking up here into the area um I, I definitely think it's noteworthy to go outside and check it out if you can here's the latest information here from uh the Space, uh, Space Weather Prediction Center as well. G3 storm ongoing. Uh, there is our forecast. There's a KP index. Again, not quite as strong as what we've seen earlier today when the uh, sun here was over the northern section of the North American continent, but uh, still fairly strong. Let's go ahead and check out the Space Weather Live forecast here. These guys have the probabilities here for the North American area. Uh, Canada, of course, has a good percentage of seeing their roars at the higher latitudes. Right now, it uh, looks like Augusta, Maine, Billings, Montana, Boise, Idaho. That's spelt wrong, I believe. It's supposed to be Boise, not B-I. Okay, but uh, Bismarck, no North Dakota, Boston, Mas Massachusetts. <laughs> there we go. That's a good one to spit out. Uh, Casper, Wyoming. There's Colorado. Uh, nothing going on into Texas yet. Indianapolis. Um, Great Falls, Montana. Uh, some of these northern tier states get out. Lincoln, Nebraska as well has a probability. And uh, New York, goodness, 6% chance there of seeing the auroras right now. So 
Uh, this is this is pretty cool. We don't get to see this activity all that often kick up here, and uh, it's definitely uh, worth going outside and looking up towards the northern um, area of where you live. And uh, sometimes you'll need a long duration camera, uh, as far as a long exposure camera goes, to view some of these auroras. But look on the uh, northern um, areas and, and see if you guys can't see it. It's definitely promising. This is a, a more uh, ge a stronger geomagnetic storm than what we've seen here in recent times. So this was pretty much a direct hit from a filament eruption here a couple days ago that, that pretty much advanced here very quickly. All right, so um, looking at the products and data stand by here for just a second let me go back to the solar ham site which is right here um yeah, it's been a while since we've seen that goodness so these guys aren't so showing the uh solar wind speed currently but this is from the uh uh discover website earlier uh, let me see here. I have so many windows open here. It's been a it's been a crazy night. Let me tell you. Far as the uh, um, activity goes, uh, let's see here. What do we got? Solar wind. Resume. Res, resume my journey. All right. Awesome. Let's resume it. Well, where to go? <laughs> Let's resume. Okay, so I wanted to check out the real-time solar wind right now. So this gives us a, a pretty good view here of the BTBZ component of the interplanetary magnetic field. This has helped a lot in providing a lot of that, those uh, charged particles to enter into the areas of the upper atmosphere of the Earth notice both of these uh, lines here the bz and the bt uh, black line here spread apart now that's pointing well south it's been a while since we've seen this uh, type of lower activity with the bz component but that is allowing a lot of the solar charged particles that enter into the upper atmospheres of the earth and provide more uh geomagnetic geomagnetic storming than what say uh uh, than what we would normally see if this was relatively stable. So uh, a little crack in that uh, interplanetary magnetic field, allowing much more solar wind to flow in. Uh, the density is still remaining elevated. Speed up there as well, about 600 or so. Nothing like we've seen earlier when the G4 storming conditions kicked in. We had uh, some reaching up to about 900 km or so. That's, uh, that's quite fancy. Uh, temperature as well so uh again it's uh it's possible to see the auroras out there in the mid-latitude areas and uh, just as possible I have hiccups at the right time as well but uh make sure you guys get out there check it out seriously this is uh something worth seeing and it's been a while since we've seen that uh, stretch down into this area of oregon um wyoming idaho uh nebraska areas get outside goodness um let's go to earthquake activity what what what's going on with earthquake activity well surprisingly about the same time that we've seen the uh, incoming cme we had a pretty good earthquake down here in the kermendeck islands new zealand area a 7.1 this originally coming in as a 7.3 Looks like the USGS finally um, adjusted there to a uh, correct depth and magnitude and location. This was originally 7.3 position, very shallow over here, that triggered a tsunami statement uh, for the Kermadec Islands. I don't believe there was any tsunami, but it did trigger uh, the uh, tsunami statement there from the tsunami.gov website. Uh, so since then, we've seen a couple other smaller earthquakes here in the vicinity of the Kermadec Islands, quite a few fives kicking up here uh, following that movement. We'll continue to watch this area. I uh, can't really say it's done yet, 
but uh, is in our watch zone, right? We kind of chatted about this earlier this morning and late last night, how this area is uh, pretty much under the gun here for some plate movement. Watch this area south into New Zealand here. Uh, I think that's a little overdue for some earthquake activity. We did see some threes, it looks like here, following that movement earlier today. Uh, earlier this evening, I should say. Looks like mostly some uh, low-grade threes kicking off here uh, across the area. Let me check out the GeoNet servers here. From the uh, folks here in New Zealand two hours ago, just south of Wellington, it looks like, uh, north area of the South Island region, the 3.5. Um, earthquake drums, check this out. You're, you're going to see the seven-pointer pop up here. These are minutes before current timestamp. Notice that uh, seven-pointer showing up very nicely across the area. Look at that. Very prominent, very well-defined earthquake there across the area of North Island and uh, South Island, New Zealand area. But this was this was well up along the Kermadec Trench, well north of this area. Uh, but far as local seismic activity goes, um, <clears throat> I'm not seeing anything really popping up here across the earthquake drums fo um, following this earthquake. No major uptick. Uh, looks like uh, the uh, Kermadec Trench area is still showing the after, uh, aftershock activity. That's where that station is located, uh, well up north here of North Island. So that's expected. Um, let's see here. Further west, we did have a little activity here into the Japan region prior to to that seven pointer 5.2 10 kilometers deep here at the izu trench uh, it almost seems like this area definitely wants to go in terms of larger scale movement uh, but right before it happens uh, we see activity released down here and pick up uh, into the kermadec trench area or further areas down uh, south of this earthquake we're still waiting on some larger scale movement here along the curl kamachaka trench it just hasn't happened. I think it will sooner or later. Uh, but it seems to be, uh, seems as though when things kick up here along the Kuro Kamchaka Trench, there's always a larger scale earthquake activity that relieves pressure up here. But continue to watch that uh, for some uh, possible larger scale movement. So uh, looks as though we're still seeing a little bit, little bit of deeper activity here into the Indonesia area with that 2.6 and the ring raised off the globe. Um, aside from that, a little bit of uptick here across the Turkey area with a couple twos and threes. Atlantic Ocean down south here into the South Sandwich Islands. We did see, uh, well, a pair of earthquakes here kicking up. And uh, it looks as though, stand by for, for a second here. Um, when did the seven pointer hit here? It looks like uh, 1741. So 1741, that's going to be uh, well, roughly in between the mix of these two earthquakes here in the South Sandwich Islands. We did see a 5.6 and a 5.4, one prior and one after uh, the seven-pointer that struck in New Zealand. So things kick it up out here. Might want to watch the South America region with this type of activity bouncing back and forth. Uh, believe it or not, yes, one earthquake out here thousands of miles away i'm talking thousands if you look at the uh, scale here thousands of miles away uh, can affect plates back here uh further east and also further west it's all a jigsaw puzzle folks uh, uh in this case it looks as though most of the activity has been affected here across the uh, south american continent so we'll definitely continue to watch that one earthquake here, just just shy of the Santiago, Chile area, 4.7, 21 kilometers deep, coming in within the last hour. A little sign of uptick here across this region. We did have some oddball earthquake activity in the red, right? Who would have who would have thought 3.6 in the red? Well, uh, the reason being because that's an odd earthquake, and uh, quite a few folks did report filming this earthquake here into the Adams Center, New York area. It's been a while since we've seen any type of earthquake activity up here, uh, but it looks as though quite a few folks did report filling it around the Adams Center, uh, Adam Center area and uh, Rodman area, Waterton. Looks like quite a few folks did report filling that earthquake here today. Uh, that struck at, uh, let's see here, 
about eight kilometers deep for a 3.6. All right, uh, the West Coast area. Let's see what we got here for the West Coast area. Anything new going on here? Not a whole lot. Looks as though uh, things have uh, remained relatively calm. We did see a slight uptick here, though, specifically within a certain area uh, right around the Bay region, San Francisco Bay, uh, just off the San Andreas Fault, a little swarm of activity, uh, including, uh, it looks like a 2.4, along with some other smaller quakes. That was followed up here uh, by some prior, uh, or some after earthquake activity near the Clayton and the Ana Antioch area with some twos, upper twos, and some ones kicking off here. So this area definitely has shown a sign of uptick uh, elevation there for earthquake activity. Down south, not a whole lot going on. Uh, we are noticing a little trend, a little trend, slight trend of earthquake activity here stretching up into the southern end of the San Andreas Fault uh, off the Brawley Seismic Zone. So we'll watch this. Right now, just a, a handful of smaller quakes, but uh, some, definitely something to watch as that with, is within the striking zone here or the uh, triggering zone, so to speak, of the, uh, the big one. That's, that's where the big one's going to take place, the 8.1, one day uh, along the southern end of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, Alaska, about the same up there. Not going to cover that too much. Into the Hawaii area, a couple earthquakes here throughout the evening. No major changes noted here across the, the uh, Kilauea Volcano area. Latest quake shows at 1.9, Pahala. Uh, so we'll watch this uh, activity here, folks, as we um, progress throughout the evening. Uh, I think with this movement here, we've seen uh, obvious an uptick here across the South America region and areas down south here that do play a part here with the South American plate and the uh, Antarctica area. So watch that for some further movement. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, the only reason why I want to show this is because, well, there's no earthquake activity, really, uh, general, generally speaking, but the seven-pointer did show up pretty nicely across the Yellowstone seismographs. That's going to be this uh, P wave, followed up by an, uh, quite a few S waves here. Those wavy patterns, uh, those are surface waves following the main primary uh, uh, wave right there in the red. Pretty cool to see. Definitely neat to look at. Uh, and to think that uh, earthquake thousands of miles away can trigger uh, this type of uh, vibration here that the seismograph stations pick up here in Wyoming. Uh, it's pretty cool. Pretty neat to think about. <clears throat> All right, uh, trimmer. Not going to forget that. Cascadia trimmer. Any, uh, uh, doesn't look like any noticeable changes here. Still 633 epicenters of trimmer. That's today alone in our little elevated trimmer uptick here since about the fourth of um of this month not seeing any noticeable changes here staying roughly consistent around the seattle and the vancouver island ranges all right uh let's see a real quick glance here at the uh space where'd we go <laughs> goodness the aurora forecast here let's double check that See if we're amplified or not. Uh, looks as though things are still staying pretty steady and strong. So get out there, Oregon, northward into Washington. Washington Northern Washington, you, should, you guys should be outside. Seriously, if uh, you guys have clear skies, uh, it's looking pretty, barely promising here. Uh, Idaho looks like Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Iowa areas, Wisconsin. Um... Even areas around Oklahoma, I heard, were seeing the <coughs> the uh, auroras tonight on the low horizon of the northern sky. So get out there. you got to have a northern uh, view there on the horizon. But uh, goodness, Oregon, get out there. I'm going to go outside right now here in northern California, see what I can see. Uh, and, uh, you know, probably not, not going to see too much. But, hey, if you guys catch anything cool, Send it here to the channel, earthmastermail at gmail.com, and we'll show it tomorrow on the show. Uh, until then, have a good night. Stay safe out there, and we will catch you guys a little bit later on tomorrow. Have a good one.